Great to have you with us. I'm Robin Kerno. Hello and welcome to the special edition of Connect the World. And it's certainly a crucial day in the Brexit process with lawmakers squaring off against Prime Minister Theresa May over her deal to leave the European Union. As you can see, Hannah Vaughan-Jones is joining me and you're outside Parliament. It's already been a busy day. Hey, Hannah. It has been a very busy day indeed, Robin. Already a long, long day ahead. The debate, though, is happening right now. Politicians are considering a host of amendments. Some of those amendments would make Brexit perhaps more palatable. Others would pull it apart altogether. The vote ex itself on all of these amendments is expected in a few hours' time later on this evening here in London. Now, ahead of the debate, Prime Minister Theresa May told her ministers she will seek to reopen negotiations, reopen negotiations, with the EU. Bianca Nobolo has been following all the developments, joins me now. I mean, that's crucial, isn't it? Because I want to ask you about the amendments themselves and which ones are actually going to go to a vote, but crucially that bit that the Prime Minister, having said all along that that's it, this is her deal, that this, there's no, it's not open for any kind of renegotiation, now she's saying, sure, I'll give it a go. That's the most significant part of what we've just heard from the Prime Minister. Often, when we're here every day, it can feel like political stasis. That's, that is very significant. Uh, Hannah Skold, live for sale on the English South Coast in Arundel, thanks very much indeed. Uh, let's speak now to Ben Bradley. He's a Conservative member of Parliament who used to be part of Theresa May's government until he resigned to protest her Brexit plans. That was over the Chequers plan uh, last year. Ben, thanks very much for being with us. So all no eyes now on this, this Brady amendment, which the government is urging its own MPs to get behind. Essentially, uh, it would mean uh, uh, alternatives to the backstop as it stands at the moment. Will you support it in the vote later? I think so. Um, certainly after what she said in the Commons, it's something I've been considering overnight. Um, I think we all need to get behind a proposal that seeks to change or remove the backstop. That seems to be the obvious thing. Um, but there are a number of vagaries in the wording of, of the Brady Amendment that we were kind of, well, I personally was hoping that she would clarify in her speech today. And she has to an extent that um, there will be a vote on a deal when she comes back with it. So we will get a chance to um, check that it is, is acceptable. Um, and particularly that she is going to take into consideration the cross, um, uh, the proposals that have been put forward by Kit Malthouse and, and the Conservative kind of cross party it, pairing. Isn't it fair to say that the lack of clarity and the vagaries that are in this Brady Amendment is largely because the backstop, as we know, we've been talking about it for years now it is so complex in itself and it ultimately if she goes back to the EU saying I want to renegotiate this they've already made it very very clear that the agreement on the table is finalized and so in voting for it later would you be con are you concerned that the EU is going to say well it doesn't matter well I think the important point is is laid out in those proposals that have been discussed over the last week or so uh, across conservative benches on remain and brexit mm -hmm. sides um, called kind of seems to be known as the malt house um, compromise today where it does lay out plan B Plan C in the event that they yeah, don't we now go have for plan that. C. Um, well, no, so this is uh, the Mothouse proposal lays out a plan A, which is to go back and get changes yeah. to that backstop. Mm -hmm. It lays out um, effectively what's been put forward uh, by the ERG as potential alternative arrangements. But in the event that the European won't do that, uh, and there is every chance that they will, truthfully, whatever they're saying currently, because they don't want um, to not be able to trade effectively with the UK. Mm -hmm. um, but in the event that that doesn't pass, there is also within it um, a plan B, I suppose, which is that we continue um, to offer plan A, we continue to say we want that comprehensive deal, mm -hmm. but that actually we can have an implementation period um, to help us transition to world trade terms um, and manage that more effectively. How concerned are you about colleagues of yours uh, in the Conservative Party and indeed opposition benches as well, who may now vote in favour of the Cooper Amendment, which would essentially delay uh, Article 50 and push Brexit back possibly up to nine months or so and, and take mm -hmm. power away from the Prime Minister and from the government in negotiating Brexit mm -hmm. going forward? Well, I think it's very clear the, the divide that's opening up between between the parties today, and seeing the Labour Party whipping their MPs to vote for um, delay and frustration to the process, and, and more, you know, um, a long-term debate and discussion and argument that doesn't solve anything. Uh, on Conservative benches, we argue about what it should look like, but we're all trying to leave for the most part. Um, so that is uh, something that's increasingly visible within Parliament. But I do think. Um, the Prime Minister has been pretty clear. We need to leave on the 29th of March, um, and I don't think uh, my constituents have voted 71% leave. I don't think my constituents would accept anything less than that. Um, there are now options available to, uh, to make that happen. Yeah, it, and yet you still seem undecided exactly as how you, to how you will vote later uh, later on this evening. The debate's going on right now. How much of what goes what what is said today is going to influence how you decide? I think today a lot. Um, often that's not the case. Um, what about on WhatsApp as well? Because I hear there's all these WhatsApp groups. Are you you a member That's of these too WhatsApp many groups? WhatsApp groups as an MP. There are hundreds. <laughs> 
of WhatsApp groups. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of discussion and conversation trying to clarify, um, and she's helped, I think, in her, her speech today, precisely what she means by alternatives and, and different options for the backstop, um, precisely what the process will be um, afterwards, because I think most of us on all sides of the argument want to give her the opportunity to go back and get a better deal, but we do need those reassurances as to what that will look like. Um, for me, she's done um, as good a job as you could expect, I think, in laying that out. I, um, unless something dramatic happens, will probably support the Brady Amendment later on that basis. OK, Bren Bradley, thanks very much indeed. I can hear your phone buzzing away, WhatsApp messages telling <laughs> you how to vote later on. We appreciate your time today. Well, I'm joined now by the Labour MP, Roshanara Ali. Uh, she campaigned for Britain to remain in the European Union and is a part of a group of MPs who support a, a people's vote, essentially a second referendum. Thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it. So when we come to all of the amendments later on today, um, many of the opposition amendments are what pe MPs are going to get to vote on first. Which ones will you support and why? Well, I, I've uh, added my name to the Yvette Cooper amendment, Dominic Grievance amendment, Jack Dromey, um, and also Rachel Reeves amendment. These are the Labour MP who are working cross-party um, with other MPs to get those amendments through. And the reason is because I think it's really important we rule out no deal uh, because that is catastrophic for our economy and the second thing is it's important that we have some additional time which is what the Yvette Cooper amendment is seeking so that uh, Parliament has the opportunity to identify uh, uh, the most support for a, a, a way forward because the current deal the Prime Minister's deal as you know has been voted down and we need time to make sure that happens it would be irresponsible for us to have a situation that the Prime Minister's put in where it's either her deal which has failed uh, to get support or crashing out, that is irresponsible and it's costing £4 billion to prepare for no deal. You're a Remain uh, supporter sure. and hand on heart then, when you cast your votes uh, later on today, will your priority be trying to derail Brexit and the path it's on right now or will it be to simply to support perhaps delaying Brexit? You know, I think that it's wrong to present it that way because when the referendum result came out, although I was bitterly disappointed, as the 48% of the country were, it was really important for the, for the Prime Minister to bring the country together and she should have done that by reaching out across party right at the beginning of her premiership. She has tried to, cross, was, to, to, to reach out and Jeremy Corbyn, well, your well, boss, see, has said you'll no. You'll see from the evidence of the dialogue she's had with other parties, she's give, not given an inch. That is not building cross-party support. That is basically repeating the Maybotic line that she has taken for some years now without listening. Even though she's faced this ma massive defeat, she is still ignoring Parliament. Her ministers, her chancellor, all ignoring Parliament and carrying on as if they didn't lose that vote on her deal. And that is the reality of what's happening in our country. And this is a Prime Minister who's holding the par uh, okay. Parliament and the country to ransom. And the alternative and to no this deal. Prime Minister would potentially be a Labour government and Jeremy Corbyn as, as Prime Minister, he certainly has said all along that he, his, his first preference would be to have a general election and yes. for Labour to take the, the reins, presumably, of, of Brexit as well. Is Labour, though, united? Because when we started talking, you listed all of the amendments and all of the many yes. Labour amendments. Labour has set out its decision to support those amendments. But there's not one, just one amendment that, that the whole party seems not, to be able to come... They're not inconsistent, actually, with our position of wanting to see no deal being ruled out. And that's why Labour has set out its reasons for supporting those amendments, including the Cooper Amendment. So uh, I don't Jeremy think... Corbyn would support the Cooper Amendment as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. The party has set out its position mm -hmm. and we will support it because it's irresponsible to put leave no deal on the table and not provide space for the government with Parliament to try and get some time to avoid no deal and try and settle this. Now, personally, I would much rather, uh, as I'm sure many other MPs would have done, Parliament was able to settle it, but you can't do that with a Prime Minister who's interested in protecting her job and her party unity over the interests of the country. That's why we are in this mess. Just finally, how concerned are you about the Brady Amendment and the fact that it seems like, at least from the murmurings and from the WhatsApp groups that are going around, sure. that, that various sides of the Tory party, the Conservatives, could actually come together and support this one and, and save the, the, the Prime Minister? Well, this is about the Tory party trying to protect their own jobs, their own party unity over and above the interests of the country. But what that amendment would do is potentially tear up peace in Northern Ireland. They are prepared to put up, compromise anything, including our national security and peace in Northern Ireland, in the interest of keeping their jobs and keeping well, their party together. Said that the Good Friday the Agreement EU would be protected. Well, I don't think so. And the EU 27 today have all unanimously said they will not be renegotiating the EU withdrawal agreement that they have agreed. Least of all, not least because they are putting the interests of peace in Northern Ireland before this government, and that is 
desperately disappointing that our government is prepared to risk peace in okay. Northern Ireland for party um, unity and the pursuit of power and remaining in power. Rishnara that is not Ali, in the national interest. We thank you very much for joining us here on CNN. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, we will perhaps speak to you again later once you've cast your votes on all those many amendments. There are seven in total. Uh, a very divided parliament. The debates are still going on behind me, Robin, uh, as I speak. Uh, the votes it's, uh, themselves will start around 7 o'clock, uh, 7 p.m. this evening, local time here in London. Uh, we're staying across it all here on CNN for you. Robin, back to you.